The famous quote, it belongs in a museum by fictional archaeologist Indiana Jones, is finally being overturned and maybe for the better. The Virginia Museum of Fine Arts in Richmond is the proud owner of Madonna and Child Enthroned with St. Nicholas of Talentino and Sebastian, a stolen art piece from World War II. The piece is dated from the mid-1510s, consisting of an enthroned version with the Christ in her lap and the men coming from the flank are Saints Nicholas and Sebastian. During World War II, this painting was seized from Jewish art collector Jacques Goldsticker and ended up in Hermann Göring's personal collection. Göring was one of Hitler's high-ranking officials. Goldsticker had fled the Nazis, leaving his collection behind. After the war, the Allies recovered the painting and returned it to Dutch authorities in April of 1946. Instead of returning the painting to the Goldsticker family, the Dutch government sold it to an unknown buyer in Amsterdam. Eventually, the painting was purchased in good faith by the VMFA in 1958. In the early 2000s, the last heir of Goldsticker filed claims to the looted art, and in October of 2018, the VMFA Board of Trustees voted to return the Madonna and Child to his heir. Within the past few months, the piece had an official homecoming to its rightful owner, Ms. Von Sucker. The National Socialist Party of Germany, led by the dictator Adolf Hitler, who took power in Germany in 1933 with their economy in tatters. Athi violated the Treaty of Versailles and began threatening their neighbors. Hitler put troops on the border near France and around Czechoslovakia. He demanded that the German-speaking region be surrounded surrendered to him and the British government, agreed in hopes of preventing another war. Soon World War II began with France, Russia, and Japan all involved. Nazi Germany blamed the vast majority of their problems on the Jews and minorities. The Nazis targeted those populations when they invade France and other parts of Europe. Nazis stole art for a variety of reasons. The main reason, though, was to gather works to fill Hitler's museum, which he called the Guggenheim. This museum was what really fueled Hitler's art theft because he wanted to make a museum that could be the cultural center of Europe with the finest art from all over Europe, including works from all the, of the old masters such as works by Van Gogh and Gustav Klimt. It also just so happened that this museum was to be located in Hitler's hometown in Austria. Hitler also stole, stole art if it was thought to be useful in Nazi propaganda for Germany, such as anything that depicted war and battle glamorous and honorable in an attempt to drum up greater support of the German people to continue the war effort. In addition, art was stolen for the exact opposite reason. If it made Germany look weak or if it didn't embody his idea of a superior Aryan race, Hitler didn't want to risk having art containing radical ideas such as the depiction of other races or religions as equal to the Germans, as well any art piece that could be used as anti-Germany propaganda. Work showing Germany being defeated in past wars was stolen and hidden away as to not risk another country using it in a depiction to lower the support of the German people. Hitler also made a classification of what he called degenerate art, which was art that Hitler didn't agree with, because it showed radical ideas or a style he didn't like. It was less about what effect it could have on the German people and more about Hitler's personal art style and preference. As an inspiring artist himself, Hitler was quick to classify modern art as well as some classical nudes as degenerate art, a model to be classic Greek and Roman and needed to embody the idea of being pro-Aryan race and made to be understandable by the average man. Criteria for what the art must show and the Nazis' track record of destroying literature and cultural ideas they didn't agree with. That a great deal of art should have been burned much like the Nazis did with books that go against the ideas of the Nazi party. However, the Nazi party destroyed a very minimal amount of art. The only time Hitler ordered the destruction of art was when the first attempt of auctioning off some works was a failure. The burning of the art was a strategic action to put fear into the hearts of other art appreciating countries. To ensure that, they, that he wouldn't burn up high value art, Hitler burnt works by famous painters that weren't well known. But after he did, that museum and private collectors flocked to Germany with money in hand to buy up as much of the art as they could to save it from meeting the same cruel fate as the other works and museums. Works that were not auctioned off would sometimes go into the private collections of Nazi officials. Some officials had specific museums targeted to loot art from an and attempted for them to get art that they admired so they could have it in their homes. This was rather a commonplace in the hierarchy of the Nazi party. 
When the war ended, some of the art that was housed in the private home of high-ranking Nazi officials was either quickly recovered by the Allies or quietly moved to Switzerland and sold to other private collectors who still own the works to this day. The stolen art, even though acquired during wartime and ownership, officially transferred to the Germans in which they had seized the land the museums were on or got the art by forced donation from the French Jews. But now in modern day, no auction houses or smart art collectors would dare buy a piece that was looted by the Nazis because of the extreme legal repercussions of being found in possession of such a work. The legal repercussions of being found in possession of such a work are astronomical on top of having to pay a massive fine, usually far higher than the value of the piece of art. One would also have to serve jail time upwards of 10 years. On September 19, 1939, the Allies began a bombing campaign throughout Germany. The Allies bombed indiscriminately, hitting everything, churches, neighborhoods, museums, anything in the path to ending the war was fair game in the eyes of the Allied government. But because of this, art was lost, and so was culture. The bombing they did was everything from fragmentation bombs to fire bombing areas to get it to burn into a clearing. Because the Hitler Guggenheim Museum was still under construction, Hitler had to hide the art until it was finished, so most of the art was hidden in underground salt mines and in other museums in Germany that Hitler controlled. It was a tragedy that so many of the Jewish people were affected.